the idea is to grow gradually because you, if you inflate, then this is what I mean by going commercial. Right. You know, but if you were able to grow consistently for four, yeah. five years, uh, and then when opportunity comes, you're already solid, you're already, uh, you, you are already established, you are known for being true to what you're doing and uh, committed to what you're doing. And then when opportunity comes, you need to be smart and how to grasp it, make yeah. the benefit of it and stay true to what you do. Thank you very much, uh, everyone, for coming out uh, today uh, to see, uh, to listen to this amazing panel of speakers. Um, I have the privilege of, of moderating and, and learning more about. I want to thank XP and the wider Middle Beast team as well for having us all here at this wonderful event. So I'm going to start with a small introductions about uh, each of the panelists. Um, they're really very short because they've all done so much amazing work. So I'm going to keep it short and then we'll go into questions. So Mona Hallam is the founder and CEO of the Anom Group. It's a Toronto-based hospitality and lifestyle company. She's originally from Egypt, uh, born, but born and raised in Canada. She's been a staple in the Toronto hospitality scene for the past 20 years, curating VIP events and experiences. Uh, Mana began Lady Luck Entertainment in 2003 by hosting the first of its kind VIP events in Toronto and creating the first all hip hop events in Toronto. She's hosted some of the best names in sports and entertainment and her most recent endeavor, Regulars Bar, is currently rated number one in Toronto. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Tanya Awad, who also joins us, who's also uh, a member of the uh, XP team. Uh, Tanya is Palestinian, Lebanese, Australian, <laughs> the list goes on. The list goes on. <laughs> she's currently based in Jeddah and she's the music, in, music programming and activations manager of XP. Um, she, through her work, she aims to elevate the music scene of the region and to be an active part of the ever evolving and growing music culture as we're seeing here. Um, her and her sister started Blank Canvas Community uh, when they were living in Melbourne. It's a monthly communal, communal art project with encourage, which encouraged individuals through the use of canvas formations and art supplies to paint, draw, and illustrate their thoughts in intimate gatherings. They now have branched out to the GCC and recently Portugal with a mission to create a safe and intentional community for people to connect and learn through creative expression. The next panelist is Mo Musa. Um, also known as Moses, is an instrumentalist, producer, DJ, and event organizer, originally from Beirut, and based now in Saudi, Jeddah and Riyadh, I believe, yeah. um, with 20 years of experience in the music scene. He is also the co-founder of Madhouse, which is a local event brand that features local and international artists at monthly underground music events in Jeddah and now Riyadh. Having roots in graphic design, he's also a visual artist with over 50 artworks on public display across Saudi. Merging both visual and sonic perspectives, Musa strives to create experiences that are memorable and that contribute to the growth of both the local and regional scene. And last but not least, <laughs> Tito, who just arrived from the airport yes. <laughs> in time. Tito Al-Kashab is a DJ and he's also the founder of Nessel, which is one of Egypt's leading entertainment brands which he started when he moved back to Egypt from Canada 12 years ago. He is now running three festivals, including the infamous Sandbox Festival, which is a three-day electronic music festival, which takes place annually by the Red Sea in Alguna. He also recently brought the Red Hot Chili Peppers to play at the Great Pyramid of Giza in 2019. Um, I put that in there because I, I, I love the Chili Peppers. It was really um, cool. So I just added that. Thank you all for, for being here today. Um, I'm just going to you know, ask questions and allow you all to answer, you know. Um, the, first, the first question is, what is uh, an experiential event? Um, I think my shortest answer to that would be a, a physical representation of a story or a vision. So it's a temporary experience, but with a mission to have a long lasting effect. Exactly. Yeah. It's uh, like uh, creating a story and uh, in a confined place um, for people you know, like to, to engage in and to connect with on more than one level. And the idea is to be consistent in the uh, concept that you're trying to portray. It's different than making just an event where people show, uh, show up, you know, uh, 
enjoy whatever is happening and then they leave and then the next event is a completely different story. So creating an experiential event is uh, for people to come and to immerse themselves in the concept that you've created for them from the minute that they walk in or even prior to the minute that they walk in from the branding, from invitations, from how things look like until they walk in, they experience the event and then they leave uh, and then they feel that they were in a in a zone and us like in a place different than the normal world, you know. And when you do that consistently, it becomes uh, imprinted, if you want to say, in people's minds uh, that they uh, they kind of expect the story that you want to show and you want to tell them, and they're coming for that reason. But the idea is to com continuously develop that idea. It's like a story. You don't just say the same story all over again. It's the story, it develops in a way, right. but it needs to be consistent in, in its own way. And it's like about the community as well. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. 100%. And the right. most important thing is leaving with a memorable experience where you always remember that feeling and what you were doing there and you kind of want to go back to that exactly. feeling, the, the memory of that experience. I'm I think I have some of you, the oh. images that you're seeing, by the way. Um, so I went through uh, when I was trying to do it when you were all speaking, but I think uh, we did Madhouse and this is also now, these are, these are in Toronto. Yeah, yeah. So these are at uh, the Lady Luck uh, events, different venues. Um, different venues, yeah. Some were Caravana weekend and just different venues all over the city. There's <laughs> Mona. So you're all pioneers in your trade. I mean, it's really amazing to sit with you all and, and learn about what you've done. But how do you build a community from scratch? I mean, like, do you have friends? You just, you just start small, it grows. Like, how do, you, how do you go about like, creating and continuing, like you said, this, um, this community of you know, friends and then, I guess, more people that will eventually attend your events? I, I, for me, I started small. Uh, I started small and it was my passion just to bring people together. And if I, let's say I started with 50 people and then the next time it might have been 60 and then 100. And <laughs> yeah, then as you can I see. Just, yeah, I just kept, and, and it was very personal. So I was personally inviting people out. Oh, you know, why don't we, why don't you get together? Why don't you come hear the music that you like to hear? Like right. everyone that came out, kind of had the same music they wanted to hear the same music that was their commonality right and and for yeah. you it was hip-hop it was hip-hop there wasn't hip-hop there was in Toronto. No, not at my time really there was no so what, what were people listening uh, to it was then? just only reggae and soca because right. we have a very large caribbean community right. or house music wow um, hip-hop wasn't really a thing in toronto um okay. and i grew up outside of toronto in another city in canada so how did you that bring... was my hip-hop influence so did you bring DJs that you knew that were playing hip hop, uh, or did you? I actually found the DJs that only played hip hop. Nice, because they didn't know where to play either. <laughs> nice, wow. <Yeah. laughs> and now there's yeah. a, a whole hip hop scene in it's Toronto, huge hip -hop right? Scene now, and oh, you're, yeah. but you're totally tapped in from yeah, the get go. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. That's amazing. Um, yeah. And actually, yeah. Sorry. sorry, I don't know if my mic's on, but. Yeah. Um, I really love this question, and when you shared it with us, I really reflected on it and thought that a community is really never started from scratch, actually. It, it just goes from something that is organic to intentional. So, you know, like Saudi's the perfect example, right? We've always had an underground scene. There's been talent around, but everyone was kind of working in silos. And the community is being built now because there is infrastructure being put in place to actually build these spaces for people, so, yeah. Yeah, I agree, I, I, for, hello? Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, it's, it's, it's exactly like you said, the community already existed, and there's actually someone in the audience who was at the very first <laughs> event that we did as well, yeah. and it just, they were kind of just there. So was it like you knew that there was something, and then you just tap, it was like the right <laughs> moment, right time, right place? I, I, don't know how it's not like yeah. it's that visionary it's kind of just like <laughs> let's do this right and then yeah. i think the key is when you 
realize that you've picked up on something, you just don't want to stop. Right. And exactly. you just, everyone comes exactly. back and so on. And yeah. then it starts building. But they were already there. Exactly. Right. In a house wow. party, on a couch here, uh, right. like different houses. And it's just like, let's do this. Bring them together. Let's engage. Yeah. <laughs> right. Amazing. And, and, and our experience, uh, building the community is the result of all the endeavors that, we, that, that took place. And the result of a lot of different uh, things that are happening that pour into building a community. And it, they, it has a lot of different values to it, from communication to cu curating the correct crowd for the correct uh, party. Right. You don't want the, uh, the wrong crowd for, uh, for a wrong party because uh, things are gonna clash, you know? Either the party is not gonna pick up or the, uh, the people who are coming for the wrong reason are not gonna enjoy their time which will reflect on other people who want to enjoy their time, you know? Right. Uh, plus, it's, uh, it has to do a lot with communication, how you're communicating your concept and to who you are communicating right. this concept right. and the consistency of uh, this communication. So it, it, it has a lot of different factors that need to work together in order to create a community. But as Tanya said, Saudi is a perfect example for building uh, communities. Now, we're talking about music events in particular. So Saudi is, um, is a perfect example because for way too many years, the communities were there, but they were underground and like kind of to each his own. But yeah. uh, now that we're, we, uh, we crossed the underground uh, <laughs> level. Well, you're obviously not underground if you're talking yeah. about it right now. And, <laughs> like, everyone we, knows we reached, now. We reached, <laughs> crowding off the ground. Yeah, we reached the ground level. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> communities are starting to actually be communicated better and be formed a little bit better and it's 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 like way too cool because all of a sudden many different communities emerged and this created a really good diversity in the music scene that we have here and this is promising for the uh, time to come in right. this industry Excellent. And, and actually you, you hit the nail on the head like consistency is like is the actual key to it all and it goes two ways that consistency right it's about us as organizers constantly providing these spaces and then also our audience also Absolutely. committing to that Absolutely. space as well so the, yeah this is the communication that we're trying to talk about it, it right. can go without even speaking a word right we can communicate on that level without talking to each other it's right. by curation and by the type of experiences that the right. uh attendees or guests or crowd or whatever you want to call them uh, are getting from right. whatever uh, we're organizing. Well, that brings me to my next question because I'm sure with that, I mean, you know, it's great. Like everything begins with a seed and uh, it grows from there, which is what you all have done, um, which is amazing. But, you know, once something starts to grow, challenges do arise. I Absolutely. mean, it's, it, you know, it, and my, my next question for the panel was, what were some of the challenges <laughs> that you faced, um, whether it be from being, let's say, maybe situated here in Saudi or, or elsewhere. And I mean, how was it in Egypt or, or in Toronto? So, yeah. Let me pull out my scroll. Who wants? <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I mean, I think for us, it just kind of snowballed very quickly. And then we just, everything just grew and, and people, I think, you know, in the beginning, the key to an experiential event and the key to a really, really nice event, no matter what it is, is if your guests are coming without expectations. Right. Once expectations jump in, the whole thing becomes ridiculous sometimes, right. you know? It's just like, no, yeah. that's, <laughs> that's not that. what we were doing. You yeah. know, like, you know it, it changes people. Everything is, you know, they're told like, this was the best thing ever. So then suddenly someone who's not too experienced is like, I must experience the best thing ever. <laughs> The whole thing kind of, and that's the big challenge, I think, living up to that all the time and, and right. trying to convince people that like, no, it was special because if you drop your expectations, you might find yourself liking things you never thought you like, True. which is why this all started to begin with, right? right? And then I, I think any artist or any pop musician or any rock musician or hip hop artist, they all face the same thing, right? Like once you go into a certain level of popularity, people are like, please do this again. You know, and yeah. it's like, <laughs> true. <laughs> it's hard. Uh, I might add to that. Um, one of the main uh, challenges that we face and we consistently uh, face 
because this whole scene and this whole culture is a little bit new in, in Saudi. Uh, How many years have you actually been doing the the, the Officially party? or unofficially? <laughs> officially. <laughs> officially. <laughs> officially. <laughs> All the way. Am I allowed to ask that? <laughs> um, officially for a year and a half. Okay. Uh, we started off in uh, June 2021. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 2021, when, uh, our first event. And we were able to... This is in Jeddah? So this is in Riyadh. In Riyadh, okay. Is this unofficially or officially? Nice. This was official? Everything you see is official. <laughs> <laughs> the unofficial... Uh, there were no cameras. It never, <laughs> <laughs> never happened. It never, never happened. <laughs> um, so uh, one of the main challenges that we face is uh, curating the right crowd. Right. Uh, because when you do some sort of a niche event like we do, with a very limited capacity, say like 150 people, mm-hmm. uh, with a very specific uh, way of doing things uh, from the look, uh, from the feel, from the music that we play, the DJs that we book. Uh, we have David, David Phoenix is one of the international yeah. DJs that uh, okay. performed with us. And now David considers himself part of the Madhouse family uh, because of the experience that uh, he went through and that we were able to pull off. But still, the main challenge is curating the right people for the right event and for the right experience. Because right. when, um, as Sita was saying, uh, high expectations or not say high, different expectations can exactly. really ruin yes. a party. Yeah. You know, so whoever is coming, it's very challenging for us to be able to screen. And I'm sorry to say that we have to do this in Saudi because... Um, the scene is very new, the culture, the understanding of uh, what what we do is still not very clear and not very well communicated. And a lot of, sadly, but a lot of people who are uh, party goers, they kind of go to the party for the wrong reason. With, and this is where we start having issues. Right. So the whole challenge is to be able to uh, curate the right crowd and the right community for the party so that we are all in this together and we're all in this for the same reason. Yes. Our reason is the music. So music right. is the hub of what we do and yeah. the main... Uh, the core. Uh, the, it's the yeah. core of, of, yeah. uh, of Madhouse and of uh, the efforts that we do. And when you have uh, people coming in to, say, I don't know, socialize and, you know, get wasted for uh, other reasons, uh, this is not the type of community that you want to grow. Right. And this is the main challenge that we face because at the same time, we would like to hit our capacity to be mm-hmm. able to maintain a business. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, we don't want to uh, just let anybody in. Right. So be, being able to uh, tell uh, who's fit and who's not fit is very tricky. And at the same time, we feel a responsibility to be uh, showcasing the proper experiences consistently so mm-hmm. that whoever wants to be in and simply did not have the past experience to uh, learn and to blend uh, on how to, how to be and how to behave in uh, these parties. Uh, it's, it's part of our responsibility to kind of uh, educate, tell, well, educate yeah. and tell the difference between yeah. uh, coming for the right reasons and mm-hmm. coming for the wrong reasons, you know? Right. So I believe this is one of the main challenges that mm-hmm. we face. Right. Uh, other challenges have to do with uh, uh, logistics and um, finding proper venues to do right. what we want, and especially that Saudi is still very new in this. Um, there's not a lot of uh, dedicated venues so that we can uh, do well. our thing. Well, this is new, you know. This There's is a lot new. of venues here. But it's it's <laughs> yeah. not accessible to everyone. Okay, That's exactly. the reality, you right. know. And we're just not quite there yet. Like, there's so many smaller brands here mm-hmm. that you know, either don't have the finance or don't have the right, like, legal processes in place right. yet to even access these venues. Right. So us as XP, you know, we really are trying to showcase upcoming brands, which is really what XP Night is exactly. revolves yeah. around. It's like a but industry. the reality is, yeah. is, you know, not everyone has the same kind of access. So right. for these smaller brands, we just don't necessarily have the right opportunities for them in place yet. But hopefully that's changing. And, and what about you, Mona? I mean, you're coming from, you yeah. know, Toronto. So I, I'm, I'm interested in, in the, you know, obviously. Yeah, because we, ha- yeah. we wouldn't have the, those same type of challenges, I guess, <laughs> because we've had the scene for forever, I guess we would say. Well, not forever. I would say 30 years. 
because originally start throwing a party and going out to a club um, 30 years ago was considered like oh, something you do underground. And if you're in school and you're getting your education, you shouldn't go to a party. And that's kind of like, I wanted to change that as well. Like you want to be able to go out and have a good time revolving around music and being able to meet other like-minded individuals and being able to network and you want to go out for your birthday or for uh, promotion or any type of life event you want to be able to celebrate with 10 or more of your friends you could do that and it all really does revolve back around the music right. so yeah and scaling like I start out small with small events so uh, one of the challenges is scaling and when you want Thank to get you. into bigger bigger events uh, you lose less control and less integrity of, of, you know, the party and the people. I mean, you can't really control that either as well. So, um, yeah, I guess that, I guess that would be it. Exactly. One, yeah, of, the, one, right? one of the main challenges as well, uh, yeah. you're absolutely right, is how to be able to grow while staying true to what right. we do. That was my next question. Yeah. So, so the, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> how do you maintain yeah. integrity as your business mm -hmm. Because it is a business, yeah, finally, you, you know. Can't. Yeah, how do you do that? I mean, with, in terms of talent, I mean, perhaps you could probably, you know, uh, book more uh, talent that maybe you weren't able to when you were starting out because maybe they're more expensive, you know, and uh, uh, things like that. But then also, does that open you up to a Absolutely. whole other... Um, it's, yeah. uh, and I think Tito has the better experience <laughs> in this uh, because, like, they grew and they grew nicely. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a very uh, fine line between growing and going commercial. Right. So the idea is not to go commercial because this is, going commercial is ruining the craft, is ruining the uh, originality and the, uh, uh, how, how genuine the content is of, of what we're doing and why we're doing it. The going commercial is starting to chase dollars, starting to chase money. And uh, sadly, in the music industry... Uh, I don't know if I agree. I don't know if I agree with that 100%. Uh, but no, that, yeah. that's, that's why I'm coming to this. It's, it's very difficult. <laughs> it's, you why. No, 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 no. He's right. He's right. Because it's very difficult to actually uh, do a growth without going commercial. And this is why I said he's the expert on this. You know, because <laughs> so they were able do to do it, that. Peter? I mean, and, and I would what's love to the, What's the, the main Well, I, I think the key, here. first of yeah. all, is to understand that, you know, at play in any kind of, you know, anyone's like, oh, whatever. All of that is honesty yeah. towards what you're doing, right? right? So if you're presenting something honestly and there isn't a lot of hypocrisy, then it's just about what level you're playing at, right? right. So you could play at like top global tours or you could play, yeah. you know, and the rules are different. I think commercial, we need to define it two ways, sounds and more bound by the rules of commerce. Right. Once you're bound, that's to me what my definition of commercial is. So right. decisions I make now, we are bound by the rules of commerce. We have overheads, we have an office, we have full time, you know, the, yeah. the whole thing. So that's, you know, we make a lot of commercial decisions, but that doesn't mean you're going to go yeah. find David Guetta exactly. on our stage, for example. But at the same time, you will find crowd pleasers and you will. But the idea is, yeah. so what? The person in front of them is having a blast. Yeah. And that's key. You just have to yeah. always create a balance yeah. and not pretend to be someone you're not. So like if you get out of the 90 person space where you're completely free to present any sound you want and you move somewhere else, well, just don't pretend to be like still in that room. Yeah. There are other yeah. people that are making those rooms really cool and hopefully and moving on from that. I mean, yeah. in the beginning, we had an opportunity where we always kept one of these kind of smaller nights yeah. Now we're just kind of overloaded, but for yeah. a while we had, you know, on the side on a Monday, a hundred people how, how just long, happening. How long did it take you to reach this from where you started? How many years? Uh, I, I mean, that, did, that's did, a did you, did you, matter you, of perspective, I guess. I did, did you grow in like a year or two or it took you time to reach this kind I, of growth? I'd say we were around for like five, four, four or five years, and then Became. the next growth happened is, very quick. This is how it is. It's, right. it's, the idea is to grow gradually, because you, if you inflate, then this is what I mean by going commercial. Right. You know, but if you were able to grow consistently for four, yeah. five years, uh, and then when opportunity comes, you're already solid, you're already, uh, you, you are already established, 
you are known for being true to what you're doing and uh, committed to what you're doing. And then when opportunity comes, you need to be smart and how to grasp it, make yeah. the benefit of it and stay true to what you do. So right. this is this is the ultimate balance that uh, yeah. that we should yeah. focus it's, on. It's a, it's a fine line, but I think that you have to sort of make sure, and also to make room for the next generation. Why not? You know, like if you you know, like I, I think that that's okay. You know, exactly. you can't do everything forever, right? Exactly. Like there'll be there'll be like younger momuses like. Why well, each group has yeah. its own perspective, exactly. right? So by default, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah, I also think it's about like paying it forward, right? Like as we grow. And as we, let's say, become more commercially sustainable, we're not just pocketing this money, right? We're reinvesting it into the community in one way or another, whether it's through bigger builds or through still creating events that are accessible for, let's say, low-income earners or students. So I think it is really a balance between, you know, how these finances are being redistributed back into the community. Because the reality is we need to sustain ourselves. Like, there's no way around that, none, right? none of it would so, happen if you couldn't, right? Yeah. Um, that's a reality that we all have to deal with. But you know, an interesting thing that happened in Egypt, um, now, you know, Egypt's obviously way more open than Saudi and yeah. everything, but basically just the way things are and venues and et cetera and tax rules and everything, it's actually become harder to throw small events. And wow. now people are, smaller events are really kind of even more hidden than they were before. Mm. Like it was kind of normal to kind of even pick up a random empty hotel space and right. now they're all charging too much so it's it's yeah. kind of like yeah, a lot of people are under the pressure to to do something big and with sponsors and it's much harder to kind of to do small do even scary. what we did in, in like in 14 and 12 2012 to 14 yeah it's become actually harder for while there are more venues there are so less venues expensive. that make sense for exactly. the things you're speaking of this is the I, yeah. case in saudi right every, now yeah this, this is the it's case like, like every the, the facilitation I mean, very high expectations yeah i heard i heard exactly. that your uh first event uh sorry was telling me was on a barge in on the nile is that yeah, <laughs> it's, it was on. It's on the Nile. It, <laughs> I don't know if it's. It's like a platform built okay. on the Nile in front of the Sheraton. But you can't do and that anymore. It's technically managed by yeah. ma managed managed by the Sheraton. <laughs> okay. Uh, and we just yeah. found it was empty on these nights, and we yeah. just said, "Let's take it." That place is destroyed now, right. but the mentality now is kind of. You wouldn't be able to do that right now. Like it's just it, doesn't make sense. The, the rents are just too much. Yeah. The, the overheads have just become. Yeah. It's kind of like it's killing the. You know, yeah. like, for example, licensing DJs now is way oh. more expensive than it was. And so you could have your friend coming from Europe and he's just crashing on your couch. Yeah. You're still going to license him for one and a half thousand dollars. Wow. Wow. So how do you make a small event like that? Oh, right. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? So you and you got to go hiding. Right. right? And exactly. It becomes more no, that's like interesting because I also think venues are always the issue. <laughs> and I think with, um, with Mona, I was speaking. So she, Mona just opened um, a permanent venue. Called regulars, but I just yeah. found out called we were regular regulars, regulars bar, yeah. like yeah. a regulars bar. Yeah. So she could yeah. kind of right. just do her events yeah. in that place, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. Then apparently now, yeah, now the use. city of Toronto uh, bought us out because they want to put a train station there. Yes, you were so not only Mona, my business, yeah. they bought out five other business on the block, and you know I just have to pivot now and find a new space. Yeah. But then even finding new spaces. They, they raised, you know, the property value, the rent value, whatever it is. Yeah. But, yeah, that's a problem. And, it, and it, after being so established and being able to... It's the important thing was being able to have local live music artists come in weekly and showcase their talent. That was awesome. Or just having a place for people to go. But, yeah, venues is important. Yeah. So but, do you think that maybe getting a venue is the right thing to do, all of you, like to have your uh, own permanent venue? It's well, nice and it's not nice. It's nice yeah. because <laughs> I love then having a venue. You might find venue. random yeah. taxes. You, there's always, yeah. right. success it's always like, brings, you know, like you, you catch up and you're that. like, I'm going to reinvest and get all authentic. Yeah. And then it's like, no, 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 no. We're raising all the, it's like, no, we just figured this out <laughs> and we want to start doing stuff that yeah. right. doesn't make money. For example, two nights that don't make money and yeah. suddenly you're under more pressure to, yeah. they just, everything comes out of the woodworks or and yet you all continue yeah, so. just, <laughs> that's the thing is I feel like everyone yeah. has a passion for exactly. it which is why yeah, that's what I was say. like I have my passion I, for sure everybody has a passion which is what's going to be the only thing that's going to make you continue it's not definitely not about money it's about wanting to be where you are like even if I throw a party if I don't feel like going I'm not going to throw it yeah. I have to want to be at the party 100%. that I'm inviting you to 
If I'm inviting you somewhere, it means that I really want to be there. If I don't feel like it, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. 100%. But, yeah. yeah, but these events are so important. I mean, yeah. I, I think that, you know, it's much more than, I mean, it's just, these are places yeah. where people come together, where people meet, where yeah. people um, also let themselves yeah. be themselves. You know, relaxed and yeah. free and dancing. And, you know, like, it, yeah. these are so important, and yeah. especially in this, you know, the world that we oh, live in yeah. now. Um, I think we, we need to continue. So, um, my next question was, what's next? Um, you know, what, what, like, you know, we talked about, okay, maybe venues, but like, what have you each got um, coming up besides um, these challenges? I mean, what are you mm -hmm. thinking sort of in the future? Uh, for, um, yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I don't know. For go me, ahead, I just uh, take it slow, uh, how I feel and, you know, what I feel like, um, when I speak to people in the community, well, you know, what would you like to do? Where would you like to be? Um, but I definitely will continue doing events, even though sometimes if I say I'm not going to do one, I, I will just because I know it's my passion because I feel like doing it. But um, I don't know. I, for me, I just take it one, one day at a time. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, for us at Madhouse, uh, the plan is to uh, ride the wave of whatever is happening uh, in, in Saudi and like now that the spotlight is kind of shed on the industry and there is the uh, call for growing a proper industry and they have a lot to do with that so thank you um, uh, we are gonna be able to create a balance between uh, creating what we call public events uh, in Saudi which is um, uh, purely licensed event uh, under all the protocols and regulations of GAA um, and at the same time to maintain our community-based uh, miniature events. Monthly, that, if you do, yeah. If uh, now the schedule might differ a little bit but there will be a monthly action for us mm -hmm. uh, ranging between public and uh, private events. Okay. So because you need to uh, be available at both scales, right. especially in, in these days in Saudi, until things properly change up here and we, look, the, the, the venue is the core of our industry. Like right. we're all, I think all of you had that. Yeah, we're yeah, all yeah. promoters and we're all uh, connected people to be, uh, and event makers. So, but the idea is where are you doing that event? Because yeah. that entitles everything else. Right. So uh, up until we have a proper, uh, solid foundation and uh, infrastructure for a uh, proper industry to grow and this means uh, availability of venues mm -hmm. for both small medium and large scale mm -hmm. events that we don't have to rebuild you know to be able yeah. to uh, uh, cater to our kind of events so up until then we're gonna have to maintain a balance between our private things and uh, public things right Tito, well, where, where next? Where, where next? <laughs> or what next? <laughs> That's a tough question. Okay. Uh, my mind is everywhere and uh, nowhere. Uh, no, um, there is some international growth that we're going to plan. Great. Um, Sandbox next year as well will be uh, a very different experience as well. And very, we're looking, I feel now it's time to travel again. Last year was kind of on the fence. But we're targeting the, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we're targeting the international community to come and visit again. We're also, for me, um, we want to bring back a couple of small nights and experiences just for us. Nice. And then investing in the tools that can allow other people to, like, for example, like venues, um, yeah. possibly investment in particular venues that can maybe hold the fort for two, three, like I told you, after yeah. a while, it just becomes uneconomical right. again because everyone's like, right. oh, really? There's money there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, but, right. Um, maybe we can, you know, create, uh, like, allow, you know, professional other promoters to come and have other spaces. Nice. And for myself, a little bit investment also on the live music side. We okay. want to, the live music scene in Egypt is, uh, it's booming, in my opinion. Um, yeah. That's... So this is, because yeah, because I saw some of the pictures, actually you had a, a stage, it looked like a band. So you, you yeah, that, but yeah. That, like, I mean, I'm talking about even more like the local scene oh, as like, well. So that was, that okay. was a band, that, that's part of our Shorelines Festival. <laughs> oh that was Limpera 3. This is Shorelines, okay, yeah, this is in exactly. Algona. 
That's in Almaza. Mm, it's okay. north coast, okay. turquoise waters. Beautiful. It's pretty much for two months, all yeah. of Cairo is up north on the coast. Excellent. Sahel. Ah, Sahel, cool. exactly. Uh, <laughs> it's a beautiful intense, venue. Intense, everyone's spending. It's very intense. It's not always my cup of tea, but this specific area is very uh, nice and intimate. So Excellent. Yeah. Great. Very nice. Tanya. Yeah, well, I guess this is a bit <laughs> personal, but, you know, I'm a classic stereotype of a third cultured kid. And I think, you know, I've always tried to cultivate community and kind of create platforms for creatives when I was in Australia. And I've always had this question about community in my context and with my heritage. And it's really led me to back to this region because there's so much talent here and it's so rich. And frankly, I'm quite tired of the narrative as, of us borrowing from abroad. Yeah. So I think for me, what's next is to just deepen, you know, my roots in the region. And, you know, the work that we're doing at XP is really intentional. You know, we want to we don't want this to just be once a year. We want to keep this mission alive throughout the year and, and keep it going. So my mission is to just localize as much as possible. Yeah. That's great. And actually, I wanted to say this, so just to wrap up, basically, uh, there was a, um, an article that was in uh, Scene Noise magazine recently that said that the um, MENA region saw the fastest growth in the music market in 2021. Oh, yeah. Thank you for sending me this. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, and it said that the industry saw a 35% increase in music sales in the last year as the region accumulated $89.5 million in overall revenues. So I guess, you know, yeah. You're, yeah. You're, you're in the right place. Maybe is, you can yeah, come over I'll here as well. Right here. This, is, this, this is your answer to the it. question yeah. of what comes next. Yeah. Right. What comes next is... Uh, There's a lot to do. There's an immense boom in the industry and the Middle East. Right. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm glad that we are part of it and that uh, you guys are creating and uh, backing uh, proper uh, experiences for yeah. people like us to emerge and to yeah. actually make a living out of it in a country where this was not frowned upon, but this was illegal. It was not yeah. possible. A few yeah. uh, years back. So it's, uh, yeah. it's like really a dream come true. Excellent. So we have, uh, t thank you so much, everyone. Uh, that was really great. I'm so happy I learned so much and I want to speak to you more about everything. Um, we can open up the floor for some questions. Uh, we have, I think, 10 minutes. Yeah, 10 minutes. Any questions? Ooh, a lot of questions. <laughs> okay, good. Hi, I have a question for Sandbox. Uh, <laughs> Your Sandbox. Yeah. Um, uh, the, uh, you talked about five years and then the tipping point after that, right? So, like, uh, As our company, uh, not for Sandbox. Sandbox, but maybe it's a similar story for Sandbox, maybe three, four years. Okay. Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask, since um, there are certain genres that are pretty niche. Yeah. And uh, the market size is not that huge, not that sizable. Yet you're committing to push it and promote it. So it's not a matter of assembling the existing fans. It's a matter of turning people on, like turning on the layman to this sort of music. Correct. Did you go through that in those first five years? Did, 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 was there like some point of like being a salesman to a layman and trying to get them turned on to this? Well, in like, the beginning of what we were doing, ironically enough, like Deep House and the Solomons and all that stuff was like, what is this music, believe it or not? Because right now, they're, they're just, they're now the old, I, I always compare them now to the David Guetta of today, right? Like, so, um, the, but back then, even Deep House was, people would come to our parties and be like, what's this music, right? And so I wouldn't say we were like, a, the sales, what we were doing was basically making sure that everything was as comfortable as possible at all times. So it's like, it's not your music, a lot of people enjoyed the vibe. You didn't need to be destroyed. You didn't, you know, the sound was always crystal clear. Like, you know, if you want to defeat pop music and introduce new music, you have to hear the music for what it really is, right? Pop music can be played on anything because it's constantly bombarded, right? So um, making the experience, going after friends, uh, you know, like usually the group leaders are, let's go to this commercial club or whatever. So we empowered certain people to be like, no, it's my turn today. You guys are all coming with me. And we were very focused on that level. 
Um, in Sandbox, I think the beauty of a festival is just open another stage, you know? And so you've got the bigger stages that are now what people want and they might represent 80% of your sales, but you use them to open up new stages, new sounds, etc. cetera. A uh, perfect example, we had Ben UFO, huge DJ abroad, obviously in Egypt, very unique sounds. Uh, the main stage closed due to flight logistics and, and everyone just came over and we had 20 minutes to curfew and we were like, you know what, we're extending another hour because it's an opportunity for all these people to hear new sounds. So we're always trying to, and that, it's very easy in a festival to kind of, well, I wouldn't say very easy, but you know, you can always, it's fine. I mean, this year we opened a, a, one, a 300 person stage, just a 10 by 10 box. Um, we can keep playing like that, but right now that, it's a balance. But how does that tie into what you said about expectations? Because like... Uh, well, there's high expectations now, right? At, and Sandbox, uh, I think a lot of expectations, uh, again, you have expectations on the main stage. We try and change the programming as much as we can, but it's still a particular sound. And so we, we have to live up, we live up to those expectations and I hope that we do. Right. And then like another stage, everyone, you've just reset expectations, right? It's something new. No one knows what it is. So whoever wants to show up at it shows up. And so that's kind of, again, how we kind of fight that, but have to kind of, we're like we said, we're a bit more commercial now. We have to, you know, it's not like some random house party anymore. Thank you. Pleasure. Um, Hi, uh, thank you for the amazing panel. Um, actually, I had so many questions, but I'm going to really <laughs> single it out. Um, uh, actually, I'm born and raised Saudi, moved to Toronto for about 10 years, came back to Saudi for 10 years, so I've got the overall 360 of what you guys were talking about. Um, and I have a really maybe um, raised point in my head thinking, um, you might agree or disagree. Um, I feel like in Saudi right now, um, it might, I feel like the approach of top to bottom probably works best. Um, I myself working in the cultural creative industry, feel like we need to have an awareness, creating a cult, you know, uh, educating people why this music matters, what, what these notes mean, giving them more in-depth um, feelings to uh, the rhythms, um, the beats. If you don't educate them, which is exactly what you guys are doing at XP, and congratulations, thank you so much for that. Um, without this awareness, we can't um, build this generation of people who can go into these, let's say, more niche categories. So starting top, bottom, I feel works well, even though you risk having people at these events that might not um, fit in or might you know, ruin the reputation or so forth. But I feel like there just needs, I think, to be a control or expectations around that as well. That doesn't necessarily mean raising the prices on people, but it just might mean raising more awareness and communication throughout the year um, on more events, not just once a year thing, exactly what you guys are doing. So um, maybe that's something that we could focus more on here in the region is educating people more about music, um, about uh, culture, creativity, and so forth. Absolutely. And uh, the, the thing is, it, it takes time. What you just said is going to take a little bit of time. Uh, I don't know. Like, I, I hope the sooner the better. But it will take a little bit of time for the uh, greater number of people to start really understanding what you just said about the beats, the rhythm, and the meaning behind uh, this kind of music with this regard to what genre is playing, the, the whole shebang of electronic music. It is communicating a lot of uh, valuable content, but for, who, who, for whoever can understand and relate to that. So it's going to take a little bit of time. It's going to take uh, a lot of effort on organizers' uh, part and a lot of shattered expectations if your expectations are too high because quality takes time. You know, you cannot have best quality stuff for the best price and the best time. This simply does not exist. So we're all going to have to be a little bit patient and have to take one for the team on each. You know, like each has to do uh, something a little bit extra to be able to participate in building a proper understanding of this culture and this country. And yeah. I, I think things are going in the right direction. I think to add to that, um out of our experience, 
uh, especially now here, it's like top down, so it's a very big start, right? Involve local ground teams, volunteers, etc. The more people that are kind of representing this concept of self-respect and be open-minded that are on the organizing force and are more relatable, like, you know, kids that are like a lot of, most of Sandbox has made, uh, you know, we're thankful every year it's 150 volunteer team that come and, you know, so they participate as well as work. And those are the people that are always usually pushing the, the right vibes and they, and, yeah. and some people kind of just mimic that kind of behavior. Yeah, exactly. So the more you have, you know, contagious. Of, of, of that around, the better, right? And that's kind of people's, it's never going to get rid of all the idiots, right? But yeah. Yeah, I do. I love what you, I appreciate what you said, actually, because there's, I guess, two parts to this, right? It's creating these avenues for people to, for, for capacity building, for people to learn, you know, like the master classes we've been trying to offer. But then it's also about the more informal spaces that are safe spaces for creatives, you know, upcoming creatives to express their work. And I, I've seen that there are a couple of hubs around here in, in Saudi. But the truth is, as well, is these are very grassroots uh, venues as well. So they also need that support. So I definitely see it as a two-way street, but also like noted on the fact that we do need more <coughs> workshops. And, you know, that has been something we've talked about a lot for XP. Um, not only to offer technical you know, sessions in XP, but also throughout the year because it is a wider mission. Yeah. Awesome. Any more questions? Sorry. So one more. I think we have time for one, maybe two. Yeah. Okay, quick, very quick yeah. ones. Wait one minute. <laughs> Hello, my name is Sarah, and I went to Sandbox for the first time this summer, and I loved it so much. Great. <laughs> I went solo for my first festival, and from I here? made so many friends from Dubai. Okay. Uh, I have a quick question for you. So uh, the thing I love the most about Sandbox was flow arts and the wellness events that you had connected to like the festival happening. So how important are these things in relation to your events when you're planning it? Wh which events that are related? Wellness. Like you oh, had a whole yes. separate section yes, with yeah, frog yeah. moose doing yoga and uh, meditation. Friends, and so friends, many things. they went off and started the... Uh, whole new wellness wellness is obviously growing as a sector in terms of events lots of people are starting to do those like wellness central fe wellness centric festivals in egypt and there are friends and they've always come to sandbox so it's just do it so as you get more commercial will it still be an important part of what you do and the events that you organize yeah i think just you know the more people that are off doing good components in a festival we just keep adding thank There's you it's also a really cool intersection between music and wellness you know yes. like music comes in so many different formats right so you know in wellness we've got things like sound baths and and certain you know music that is attuned to certain types of frequencies that actually offer healing to people so i think it's also about us looking at music from a different lens exactly you know? it's like yeah. an accumulated uh, positive energy and whatever can contribute to that is welcome Thank you. i agree Thank you. Uh, last question. We have, <laughs> sorry, we have the 30 seconds. Oh, yeah. We just added some seconds. <laughs> I think we have, Squeeze one. Hi time. guys, how are you doing? <laughs> so uh, my name is PJ, I'm from Toronto, and my question is for Mona. Uh, I have come to a couple of your parties in the last couple years, and some of the parties that I've been to really felt like a memorable experience, and I noticed in some of your slides that you had Snoop Dogg and Vince Carter and all these athletes and celebrities there. How did you manage to get these guys to your parties? Um, well, I don't think of... Okay, so when it comes <laughs> to those, I don't think of those guys as somebody different than how I would see you or any other person. Uh, I focus on the actual event and making sure the music is good, the staff is amazing. When you enter, the feeling you have, it's safe. Safety is number one. And that everyone there, they really want to be there. And that energy as it goes through the room, it's just... I don't know, it just becomes somewhere you always want to be in. And now you want to know, when's the next one? And it's, you know, if it's once a month, it's okay, once a month. And no matter who's there, whether it's Snoop or, or Kevin Garnett or any of these people, they want to be there because they know they're going to have a good time. And they know that it's going to be safe. And they know they're going to be around good people. Those, those kind of things, nice. I guess. <laughs> that's absolutely Yeah, <true>. right? <laughs> awesome. 
Yeah. Fantastic. So, True. So thank you on. very much. That was amazing. I learned so much. And thank you so much for having yeah. us. <laughs> You guys are great. Thank you, Sunny. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. My pleasure. It's my first time. <laughs>